Hey everyone, I'm Victor Skarbay from Rococo, and today I'm going to walk you through the workflow of using a control rig and animation layers inside of Maya. I hope you find this video helpful, and if you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. In this video, we'll be using a control rig on our character to get easy access to the IK chains, which can greatly simplify the editing workflow. The great thing about using this workflow is you can do all of it without destroying your original mocap data, and it's surprisingly easy to do as well. Now, let's get into it. So, the first thing we need to do is to record some mocap. In this case, I recorded a clip using the smart suit and the smart gloves. If you need help setting up the hardware or recording mocap, please feel free to check out our other tutorials on the channel, and I'll leave a link to them in the description below. In this clip, I'm sitting in a chair pressing on a button and watching something happen right in front of me. When exporting, I always recommend using the human IK skeleton regardless of the 3D program you're in. Now, let's get into Maya. Now, inside of Maya, I've already set up a character ready to go. If you've never done this before or need any help, feel free to check out our other tutorials on the Krakow YouTube channel. You can do this with any character you want, of course. And we're gonna pick my character on, gonna rename it to Samurai underscore Char. And from there, we're gonna import our animation file. I'm gonna drag it in from my folder outside the view. And this is exported as a 30 FPS clip, so my Maya scene will also be in 30 FPS. Now I'm just gonna scale down the Newton so I can visualize the animation. I'm gonna dive into the human IK again, and we're gonna pick a character definition for our Newton. Gonna isolate it by pressing Ctrl-1, enable the X-ray joints, and disable mesh clicking. This makes it easier for us to pick the skeletons. Now we're gonna create a character definition, rename it as animation. Now picking the hip bone, as you can see in the outliner, you don't want the root, you want the hip bone. And I'm gonna pick a preset of mine called Rococo Skeleton. Gonna match all bones, and it should be matched perfectly. Now you can also do this manually, it will work either way. I can recommend making a preset because it makes everything so much faster. From there, gonna disable the X-ray joints again. We're gonna go back to our Samurai Char character. Under Source, we're gonna pick the newly made animation. And we should have animation correctly translated. I'm gonna readjust my frame range because the clip is a bit longer than I expected. I think it should be around 600 frames. Now that the animation works perfectly, we're gonna bake it. Now, normally we bake to skeleton if you don't wanna adjust any animation at all, but we're gonna go to the control rig this time. And as we can see, it is baking along the frame range and it's gonna use whatever FPS you're using down in the Maya timeline. In my case, this is 30 FPS. And boom, it is all ready to go. As you can see, there's keys on my timeline, so we know that it's been baked, so we can go ahead and hide the Newton and only focus on our character. And here I'm gonna quickly model some props for our animation to interact with, to make it a bit easier to edit and make a cooler pose. And now that's done, we can have our animation. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dive into the channel box slash layer editor tab, and we're gonna use the layer editor. Now that is under the anim flag at the bottom right, next to the display tab. And this is where all the magic happens. So how it works is, you pick your controller in the view, viewport, and you can see all the keys are baked onto it. Now this would make it impossible to animate on, as each frame has a baked animation, which means that if you have a key like this, it would reset every single frame. So this would make it very hard and almost impossible to actually animate on. Now what we're doing is we're gonna use the animation layers. And there, as shown over to the right, you have the create layer from selected and you have the create empty layer. Now, what you can do is you can pick the empty layer and you can add whatever you selected in the viewport and that would automatically put it into this layer. And as you can see, all the keyframes disappeared. This means that you can now animate however you want without having to worry about all those remaining keyframes. So you can make a cool pose like this, you can animate it quickly and 
you can key it by pressing S. And as you can see, throughout the entire animation, it keeps that position. Now, always remember to rename your layers. It is the best way to figure out what's what and where things are. Now let's say we want to put a different key. We can use these over here, where you can control the weight and key at the same time. Now setting the weight to 1 will have it as you've already have. Now if you want it back to its original position, you can use the one next to it called zero weight and key layer. Now this means that it will key a layer, set a key, so turn your current frame, and it will put it back to its original position. So you don't have to worry about making a key in the first frame to keep your original position, you can use the buttons to the left of the tab. Now we don't want that in this case, so we're gonna delete that and we're gonna move on to the next foot. And we're going to use the crate layer from selected this time. And we're going to rename it to left foot. And we're going to just quickly pose in a different, different form. So we have a bit of more interesting stance. I like this because it gives a more relaxed look than what we have before. And it should keep its position all the way through. And as you can see, it still does. And it still has that nice knee animation from the knee controller right above, which is what is so powerful about this now. Going on, if you want to get a more interesting action happening and you want to edit the animation, we're going to pick the neck controller and we're going to create layer from selected. Going to key here and we want him to look down when he presses his hand on the bottom to indicate that he knows it's there. So we're just going to create a couple of keyframes and it's at 133. He probably hits the button, so we're going to key it at 133, 134. And when he rests his hand on his thigh, we want to keep back so we know that it's going to go back from there. So here we want to just quickly focus his head down in the eye view of the button, as roughly as we can get it. That looks pretty good. We're going to see how that looks. And I think I forgot to key it, so I'm just going to do it one more time here. Key it. There we go. And as you can see, by keying it, it works. We get that. I can see my animation is playing a bit fast, so I'm just double checking. Remember to put it at your FPS times one, not play every frame. And there we go. We get a much cooler animation and we get the feeling that the character actually knows where the button is, which is really nice. And this is without destroying any of our previous animation, which makes it non-destructive. Basically a great workflow for you to work in. Now here you have these mute layer, which is nice because this means you can see your previous animation. You can also isolate your layers so you work only by viewing the animation on that layer, which is really handy. But by muting, you can then see your previous animation, which is pretty nice. And as said, you can solo layer, which automatically locks and mutes the other layers, or hides them rather. This means you can quickly isolate your view and watch what's happening and what you're doing with your animation layer. Now this means you can also lock your layers, which means you can't mess up your keys inside of them. So let's say if I pick the neck layer here, but I've locked my right foot layer, any changes I would make would be made on the neck layer, because that's the only one that hasn't been locked. And as you can see, it's also showing green, which is the indicator as to which layer you're in. So no matter what change you do, you won't be able to make any changes in a locked layer or a red layer for that case. So now you can see I've unlocked it and now it's green. So if you keep these workflows, you should be able to make quick, non-destructive animation using the control rig and using the animation layers. And that's how you edit your mocap using a non-destructive workflow inside of Maya. Check out the YouTube channel for more information on how to work with mocap in Maya, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks!